according to a report by the Vietnamese government, from January the 1st, 2015 to June the 30th, 2019, 8,442 cases of child abuse with 8,709 abused children nationwide were detected, handled criminally and administratively. Details are as follows. 6,432 children were sexually abused, accounting for 73.85% of the total number of abused children. There were 857 cases of violence against children. On average, 7 children were abused per day in Vietnam. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Faced with that situation, Children and youths who are supposed to be agents of change are not only lacking knowledge or information and skills on gender equality and prevention of violence and sexual abuse, but also lacking motivation and belief in positive changes. For them, violence and sexual abuse are still considered as taboo topics. One of the major challenges of gender training is that it is not easy to change the gender norms and eliminate gender stereotypes. Many people may have sufficient knowledge about gender and gender equality, but deep down in their heart, they still believe the gender norms and stereotypes. Therefore, they continue to redo and reproduce the gender-based discrimination in their family and community, knowingly or unknowingly. In Vietnam, improvisational theater has been used in development projects in general and in training and communication activities on gender, in particular since the 2000s. This method has proved to be effective in encouraging people to break out of silence, speak out unspeakable experiences and feelings, put themselves in possible scenarios or in other shoes, and think of feasible solutions for themselves. Improvisational theatre, in its pure form, does not include script and director. All dialogue, dramatic action, plot and characters are created naturally and spontaneously by performers without prior preparation, discussion or planning. To suit students, the original improvisational theatre has been adapted into creative improvisational theatre by the core group youth. Specifically, they will be a part of pre-built contents a story with many risky situations from which the students will have choices to behave and solve problems. The above variation and creativity make improvisational theatre convey emotions and stimulate audiences' problem-solving ability, as they must put themselves in characters' shoes to solve risky situations in the story. Improvisational theatre is also a deeply democratic art form that promotes a sense of community and empowerment between performers and audience. Audience also join the theatre by commenting on improvised plays and providing solutions to social problems. Ms. Tattoo Foundation wishes to share Vietnam's practice process and experiences, as well as inspire experts and facilitators in Asia to apply this innovative and effective method. We have documented many improvisational theater projects initiated and implemented by Jews. Hopefully, this video and improvisational theater method will be widely used by individuals, organizations, and network for gender equality in Asia. The application of improvisational theatre in gender training or communication requires the involvement of many relevant parties and should be carried out with the following four steps. Step 1. Forming a technical advisory group including the improvisational theatre experts and gender experts. The improvisational theatre experts can be actors or actresses trained in community development and community development professionals trained in the improvisational theatre application. In Vietnam, the community development professionals will most likely have had further training in improvisational theatre to become improvisational theatre experts. This technical advisory group can be set up via community development projects or by improvisational theatre and gender experts who connect and collaborate on their own with a shared desire to promote gender equality. 
The improvisational theater and gender experts will work together to develop a separate training program for young people on gender and gender equality in general, as well as the prevention of violence and sexual abuse, in particular through improvisational theater application. Step 2. Building a core group of young people who are active and interested in the application of improvisational theater in the prevention of violence and sexual abuse. They are trained by the technical advisory group to be able to apply the improvisational theater proficiently, as well as to understand deeply on gender and gender equality in general, and the prevention of violence and sexual abuse in particular. Being enthusiastic and creative young people with the same interest in gender issues and sexual abuse prevention, we have gathered and selected acting enthusiasts gifted in communication, talkative and active to form a team. To have a youth improvisational theatre team, the young people have to go through a lot of learning. Firstly, they are required to get more knowledge on gender and sexual abuse. Secondly, they have to learn about the skills used in improvisational theatre. In improvisational theatre, they also need to learn how to work together, how to coordinate, how to control and express their emotions. And most importantly, they have to practice regularly to integrate both the learned knowledge and skills to create stories so that they can practice and prepare for unexpected situations. In case something comes up during performance, they can handle and solve those situations appropriately based on their own learned skills. Step 3. Organizing a series of improvisational theatre sessions to increase the capacity and awareness of other young people about violence and sexual abuse prevention, also known as peer education. Partnering with schools as stakeholders. Partnering with schools as stakeholders to organize events promoting the application of improvisational theatre which are, by nature, easily accessible to a large number of young people of the same age. This is also a way to attract the attention and support of leaders and teachers at schools and stakeholders to create a supportive environment for young people in the prevention of violence and sexual abuse. The core group developed scenario for the situation related to violence and sexual abuse and the questions for discussion part they also prepare all necessary props and gifts for the young people who participate in the role-playing part or who have good ideas or answers, etc. After that, they practice and rehearse. The structure of an improvisational theatre section includes the following parts. Opening Introduce the purpose of the working section, the role of the core group and the young participants, and agree on working principles. For example, always say yes and, no judgments and no discrimination, etc. <laughs> Acting out a situational scenario. The core group act out a situation related to violence and sexual abuse. At the end of the performance, the core group encourages young people to think more deeply about the situation and different ways of solving it. Each solution is considered in terms of its advantages and disadvantages. Discussion and role play. Encourage young people to step on stage and play as characters to solve the challenges of the situation. Young people have the opportunity to share different feelings and thoughts as well as different solutions through their own improvisation. Closing. Recall share knowledge or information and try solutions. Summarize advantages and disadvantages of each. Additional knowledge or information and skills required are also provided. Duration and number of participants or students. Maximum 2 hours and less than 100 people for a session. On-field experiences and adjustment for the next performances. Evaluate achieved results and issues to be adjusted. Develop following direction. A 
just contents and methods for following communication or training sessions. I was、um, very impressed with the communication session, especially the improvisational theater method. The skits, though moderate, were very unique and could fully convey the messages. Through this, the students not only learn how to apply the newly learned skills for themselves, but also share those new knowledge with their parents. This had to help spread these skills and knowledge within the family, the whole community, and society. This was a very great benefit brought by the project. Our school had also shared about this project with the Department of Education, as well as other schools in Sante Town, and the idea was very well received. Participating in the project, I felt like it was a breath of fresh air. This project has left such an impression on me, as well as other students in my school since then. Step four. Summarize and learn from the whole process of applying improvisational theater. Evaluate achieved result and issues to be adjusted. Develop following direction. Participants, advisory group, core youth group, and relevant parties if necessary. As for the project or forum stage. Communication of prevention of sexual abuse against women and girls, implemented by the core group HUMRI, students majoring in mass communication of Academy of Journalism and Communication in 2019, had achieved the following encouraging results: 800 young people from 12 to 22 years old were more proactive in learning knowledge and skills on the prevention of violence and sexual abuse. Say no to gender-based stigma and discrimination. Actively seek help from relatives, friends, and the community, and more courageous to share personal experiences of violence and sexual abuse if they experienced this problem. Though it has been two years since I participated in the project, the conveyed content and meanings have been still very valuable and meaningful to me. During the implementation of the activity, we also encountered many specific difficulties, such as difficulty in connecting and choosing a place to organize the performance. In addition, difficulties in developing the script, finding risky situation on sexual abuse, and last but not least, figuring out how to engage adolescents in improvisational theater. And we have solved these problems as follows. Flexible handling, seeking the support of many related parties, actively working as a team, communicating closely with the technical consulting team, focusing on ice-breaking and networking activities to remove fear and psychological barriers, so that adolescents are willing to express their feelings and opinions. Ensuring a fun, respectful, and non-judgmental space by agreeing on working principles and using encouragement techniques such as clapping, cheering, saying thank you, and smiling all the time. If you want to apply improvisational theater in your projects or training, we are willing to share more details and connect you with relevant experts. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us through.